you were to be stranded on an island uh-huh. and you could pick between eating only Doritos or drinking only Mountain Dew, yeah. what would you pick? I think you got to have the liquid, right? you got to have the... Uh... To survive. Well, if, I, if I got the munchies, then I'd go right on to the Doritos. <laughs> yeah. Ah, the Michael Bay Transformers. In preparation for Transformers 1, I had myself a bit of a rewatch of all the live action movies. And it's funny how all over the place the series is. The first movie is a genuinely great sci-fi action blockbuster with amazing effects, big action scenes, and a lot of surprisingly inventive ideas. Revenge of the Fallen is a hilarious mess of bizarre pacing, terrible comic relief, and writing. Doctor on the Moon is better, and somehow worse. Age of Extinction is the worst thing ever. And The Last Night is slightly better, but still awful, and so bad, they rebooted it with the genuinely great Bumblebee, which showed plenty of potential for this series' future. Only for Rise of the Beast to be AGGRESSIVELY MID. Over the course of these films, I grew to appreciate a lot about them. There's a weird passion with them that's undeniable. They feel, for the most part, like an actual creator with a vision worked on them. It's just this creator's vision was clouded by explosions, cool cars, and America. I've always said I'll take going all out and coming out rough, rather than trying to play it safe and ending up dull. Unless you know the name Michael Bay, who directed most of the recent Marvel movies, but probably the aspect that remains the most famous and infamous is the design language of the Transformers. Some characters are remarkably loyal to their G1 and toy counterparts, some are completely different. Some designs are so good they've become an iconic depiction of the character, others are skids and mudflat. I must admit, the only movie figure I had any real interest in at first was the Devastator from Studio Series. One day I'll review you, my dear. And since then, I've started collecting Studio Series movie figures nonstop. And, uh, is this healthy? Do I need help? Leader Class Megatron, what do I do? Yeah, there's no getting around it. I adore these things. Don't get me wrong, the Studio Series figures for the 86 movie are fantastic too, with their great posing and cartoon accurate colors. But something about seeing these incredibly detailed designs rendered like this, I, I don't know what to tell you. It tickles my little monkey brain. I wanted to pick a perfect figure to represent the Bavers, both everything great and everything ridiculous about it. And after much prattling on, here's Voyager class movie Starscream. Starscream is one of the most iconic Transformers ever, and there are very few times they strayed away from his classic look and personality. Whether he's an angsty boy, a large boy, a long boy, or a fruity boy, Starscream's design has been pretty consistent. The biggest design change I think I've ever seen for him is they gave him a face mask in Beast Wars 2. So come late 2006 and early 2007, we got some leaked concept art, and the reaction is pretty mixed. Some art was well received, others not so much. And Starscream was one of the most controversial designs. Come the final movie, seeing these characters in motion put a lot of fears to rest, as well as a lot of the improvements to designs such as Tiny Face Megatron. But Starscream was still pretty polarizing. You stand him next to a traditional figure of Starscream and it's practically not the same character, save for the wings. Everyone made fun of his design, from his weird face to his infamous Dorito body, and that's 100% reflected here. Studio series aims for screen accuracy, and they do a great job, for the most part. And looking at Starscream here, they did an amazing job replicating what was on the screen. The detail on this figure is astonishing. There's so much texture on this thing with all sorts of tech lines and a layered look of the Bayformers. The big thing with Bayformers is their armored look with an underlying endoskeleton. Starscream is one of the clearest examples of that. There's so much depth to him, uh, visually, not character-wise, sadly. You can see his endoskeleton peer through his F-22 fighter armor. Also, bonus points for the cockpit with the chair. We need more of that, dang it. And say what you will about the Dorito body, it does provide a standout look. And in the movie, it makes for a very dynamic character's design, like with that cool mid-air transformation he does, leaping about and flying with those big, funky chicken legs. I have a roommate who can't stand this design, calling it very ugly and unreflected of the character. I disagree. Kinda. It does, in a weird way, represent Starscream. There's a snake-like quality to the face, almost sniveling. And his large chest and body, contrasting his tiny limbs, shows that he's confident, but ultimately weak. And as for ugly, well, she's just flat wrong. Articulation is mostly good, 
You have quite excellent arm, head, hand, and leg articulations being very poseable. But there's no waist articulation, sadly, though I don't know how you would make it work with this design. And a character like this could have really used some ankle pivots to help those chicken legs stand. I do love the wrist articulation, though. It allows the gun to lock back in. Oh, and another accessory with Studio Series figures are these cardboard backdrops that also double as the box inlay. They look pretty cool, but ultimately aren't the best. I have a green screen, I can just put in my own backgrounds. The transformation is pretty dang fun. Transformers that involve a lot of unfolding can be a massive pain, ahem. But the way Starscream unfolds, it's as if his body actually merges into his plane form and it feels really good to push everything together. And the final result is this quite handsome F-22 fighter jet that just looks marvelous. It perfectly captures what we saw on the screen. And also it's just a little bit dirty looking, which gives it more of a textured look while not overdoing it like Siege did, which I really like. Also, love the Decepticon Air Force symbol. Such a nice touch. It feels good to display and play with, which is exactly what I'm looking for with my Transformer. Even the underside is quite nice, but it feels a lot better hidden than a lot of other planes or flying Transformers. This guy at least hides his arms. The weapon storage is a little odd though. It's supposed to be like a flame bursting out of the back effect, but it kind of looks like an angry face underneath, especially with those boosters looking like big allies. But regardless, it's a grand old time. Honestly speaking, yeah, it's a weird design, but this figure kind of helped me to appreciate Dorito Scream and helped me to realize what I love about the Bayverse designs. They do feel the most transformative. I don't think there are any cases of tummy time transformers, and even the ones that kind of do it, do it way better than most. Studio Series movie figures feel like they are a real world vehicle coming to life. Not that there's anything wrong with the ones that are a bit more like the cartoon or get a bit more sci-fi. I wouldn't collect those figures as well if I felt that way. But I do find myself loving these transformations more and more. They're complex, but satisfying. I love them so much. I'm giving this figure a 4.5 Mountain Dews out of 5. Yeah, I'm looking for the Mountain Dew robot too. So question, what do you think of the Bayverse designs? Do you have any favorites, any you hate? Let me know in the comments and please subscribe. And all hail your Dorito Pope. Stream is so cool. I don't care what anybody ever says, I love him.